well, it is time to bring on our first guest. Um, you may uh, know him, uh, occasional uh, circuit racer at BSB and, uh, and BSB races. You may also know him uh, from occasional road racing. Uh, but what will he exactly be doing this year? Let's ask him. It is Richard Cooper. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, not so bad. Just um, figuring out how to work these computers. And I was have to call Danielle in to just try and get the camera to work. But uh, got there in the end. Yeah, we uh, it's, well, it's our first show back. So, yeah, it's a bit of a technical challenge for us as well. Just literally plugging things in and figuring out how stuff works. Um, so, yeah, uh, how was your uh, Christmas and winter? What have you been up to? Uh, very different, actually, to any other than, than it's ever been because we had... A, little baby girl in September and uh, we'd moved out in October so a normal Christmas for myself would be trying to figure some sort of training regime you know same fit physically riding motorbikes as much as possible however this one was very different because of the baby and the house move um, and it was probably the best yet to be honest because uh, you know what an experience it's been being a dad for the first time um, and it was just a real good family Christmas that um, I think everybody needs every now and then just to pull themselves away from racing life, which is pretty much all I've known for 20, 20 plus years. So, um, yeah, it, it was it was one to remember for sure. Oh, well, that sounds like you're getting your, your family uh, life and stuff settled and sorted. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, basically we wanted to know, uh, of course, we're going to ask you, some obvious questions and we just wanted to get your opinions on them but um yeah well i'll let lewis ask first of all um just so he can be the one to be asking not me um uh, go on then. um well of course the biggest news story probably in the past couple of years probably for road racing is the insurance falling through for the mcui and then um, we just wanted to know what is your thoughts on the current state of road racing at the moment um you know, it was something that um, I was expecting for a while, even though it was quite a surprise to, let's say, social media as of last week. Um, but because I ride for two Irish teams uh, previously and also one this year already, um, and I'd been over to Ireland a little bit, you sort of you hear bits of news and stuff and you can start piecing it together and you hope that it's just rumours, you know, you hope that it's not true what people are saying about, uh, you know, the situation that the Northwest and the whole of Ireland really is in with racing. But unfortunately, you know, it, it sort of come to fruition last week and it was like panic stations for everybody and a social media blow up, which I don't know if it was the right thing. Um, you know, I don't know if that's what it needed to to get some awareness of their situation. Hopefully it works in their favour. But equally, I am optimistic that there will be some racing, you know, and, and plans are continuing for myself um, as if they're, you know, the dates are set and, and we are going to go. So I think um, I think you have to be um, optimistic. You have to, you have to give yourself a, a date um, like... BSB races do, you know, they plan for round one for myself and for the team I've signed for. We're planning for, for that, uh, that, you know, that first week in May. And, um, well, talking about the road races this season, the Northwest 200 is gonna, one of the most anticipated races of the year. Do you think that has a realistic chance of still going ahead this year? Or is it, like you said, just optimism at the moment? Um, I believe, my opinion, is the Northwest will run. Um, you know, I do believe that. Um, I think that it would be a, a shame if it didn't at this late stage, you know, because financially for the the whole of the Northwest, what the racing brings to society and community, if you like, is a massive, massive import. Um, and it would be a shame for that to go to the wayside due to insurance reasons when I know it's a big number that the you know the insurance are quoting for for it for the get to get cover, but I'm pretty sure that if if we all club together, if you like, or if, you know if they all if everybody puts their heads together, it can happen. Um, I just I hope it happens. You know, for me, the Northwest 
was only a bit of fun, and it still is a bit of fun, but it's becoming higher and higher up on my list of things to do each year. You know, this will be my third year returning. And um, I I hope that it runs. I have some very good bikes in place, you know, that potentially could see me, I believe, in contention for podiums in all three classes. And well, last year, actually, at the Northwest 200, you were fighting for race victories and you managed to pick up some race victories unofficially. Um, but of course, it was clouded over some controversy over your super twin at the time. Um, does last year's Northwest still have happy memories or is it slightly clouded because of the whole decision? No, not at all. I think um, for myself, being an older racer, um, that you have to just sort of brush those things aside because if you are too caught up on the situation um, like the Super Twin race, you know, where the winds were taken away from me and it was out of my control, um, which at the time was difficult, you know, and I, and I perhaps said a few words on social media um, that I shouldn't have done, but when you're in the moment, you you sort of not thinking, forward thinking. Um, and, you know, I, I regret some of the things that I said and equally I named some riders that I perhaps shouldn't have done at the time. But, you know, that is racing. We all want to win. And when you do win and it's taken away from you, at the time it's very difficult. But, you know, what's done is done. And now I feel that the best way to, to beat that situation is to return and, and to win again you know, rather than be caught up on the situation that's out of my control now, it's, it's done and dusted. Um, and and the, the funny thing about the Northwest last year was I won two Super Tune races, which in my opinion is a class of nothing. You know, what even is a Super Twin, if I'm honest? Like an ER6 with a 700cc engine, potentially Superbike forks with bodywork off a of RS250 Honda, you can't buy these bikes. We all go to watch the Superbike race. And even though I won two Supertune races, I podiumed both Superbike races, but not many people talk about that. So if you get my, where I'm coming from, like I can't be caught up on the two Supertune races because I podiumed the Superstock, both Superbikes, and we all go to watch the Superbike race. Yeah, certainly. And with the Super Twin class, as you as you said there, it's, it's kind of a mixed up class. All, all the bikes are made of five or six different motorcycles. So do you think the Super Twin class is in a good state at the moment with them now allowing the 700cc engines into the class? Or do you think maybe they should be looking towards something else to even replace the class? Um, honestly, m- my opinion on the class um, has changed a little bit since riding in it. Now, Aprilia and Yamra both produce a super twin, the Aprilia 660 and the R7. In my opinion, they are production-based super twins. A Kawasaki ER6 with, let's say, to yourself or to, to, to Christian, unrecognizable, you know, if you look at it, you know, my bike was absolutely amazing, but unrecognizable as an ER6. I'm on the fence with that, you know, and that's the honest truth. Um, Hopefully more manufacturers are going to produce machines that are capable for that class. And then if they can make it a production style super twin race, then I believe there is, um, there is, you know, there's a category for it. There is a race for it. But, you know, I got disqualified for a modification of where the fearing bracket was mounted. And I get that, you know, that is, that's the rules. However, I could have bolted Alvaro Bautista's front forks into my bike and nobody would have flickered an eyelid. Now, do you understand like where I'm coming from with that? So a bracket disqualifies me for the race, yet I could buy the most expensive forks there is possibly to buy and I could be included in the race. So I'm a bit like, yeah, I'm a bit difficult with that one. Yeah, and the, well, of course, you're not racing in, just in the Super Twins this year. You're racing in the Super Sport class as well, and you're going to be teammates with Dean Harrison. So how are you feeling towards that? 
You know, um, the R6, the Alistair Russell racing R6 was obviously previously rode by Ian Hutchinson at the Northwest and the TT. Um, and it was through Ryan Farquhar, who I rode the Super Tour for, who then introduced me to Alistair and uh, the main sponsor, uh, BPE. And I had a little go on the bike and immediately I was like, this is for me. This is, you know, this was a, it was a, a nicely put together bike with a, a small knit team. And this was the end of last year. And between myself and Alistair, we put a plan together where we'd try and do a BSB as a bit of a test really to, see if we could see if I like the bike, see if we work together well. And that would be the plan for 2023. Um, and it wasn't really until um, Taryn McKenzie got injured that our plan sort of came together because Alistair Russell was Taryn McKenzie's mechanic at McCam's Yamra. So when Taz Mac broke his leg, it then freed up Alistair to run the R6, which then we then went to Brands Hatch and... Um, you know, we had a great weekend and did a double podium in British Super Sport. Um, and for me, that was like, okay, I need to be on this bike at the Northwest. You know, knowing uh, the ability of the bike and the ability of myself, um, I believe, you know, I've got to believe that um, I can fight for, for podiums on that bike, which is why, you know, it's the first deal I got sorted for 2023. There is still a, a few of things that I need to sort, but that one was like I needed to confirm that. They then announced that Dean was going to be my teammate, which for me, you know, Dean's an international road race, you know, star race winner. What a better person to have alongside you in the garage? Somebody who can, who's won, I don't know if he's won Northwest actually, maybe podiums at Northwest, won TTs. And Dean, if you know him, such a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, you know, it's an easy relationship for us to have. Um, so I believe, and I said it at the um, at the bike show in Ireland two weeks ago when I was over there, that um, I believe that both of us can be on the podium at the same time at Northwest if it runs. And, you know, there's no reason why why we shouldn't believe that. Yeah, just one more question for me for the time being. Um, so we've seen, I think about a week ago, that Suzuki has pulled out of British Superbikes as well. And you've rode for Build Base in the past. You've won championships for Build Base in the past. What's your feeling towards Suzuki and Build Base leaving British Superbikes? Um, you know, it's. I think um, it's run its course in the in the best possible way. You know, they've been successful. Um, I did have the stats for sort of race victories and um, how many races they competed in over the years. And, you know, it's been a great bike. However, it is lacking um, some key areas. And you only got to see what modern bikes come with now as standard. You know, uh, uh, a Honda or a BMW S1000, they're, they're nearly £40,000 to build a superstar bike let alone a super bike and the Suzuki. I'm not saying it's not good enough because I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I won on it halfway through last year in a one-off ride against a field full of Hondas. I still believe that you could do that this year, but um, without the support of Suzuki and, and the backers such as Bill Base, you know, it makes the job a lot more difficult than what it has been in the past. And when you can, let's say, go buy another manufacturer's bike and without doing any engine work to it whatsoever, you find yourself 10 or 15 horsepower up on what a Suzuki was, you know, that's money can't buy that. You know, no matter what you put into that Suzuki, it will never be the horsepower of the competitors because the engine just won't let you do it. So... I get the reasons why Suzuki pulled out and I get the reasons why, you know, Hawk Racing, uh, a, a team that I rode for many years, in fact, I was there this morning, but I won't say too much about that, um, I've made the change. You know, I get it. Um, and you have to move with the times and, and Honda, which they have gone to, they are the times, you know. And I dare say, I hope that in four or five years' time, Suzuki are back and... 
people want to ride Suzuki's again because you know they're a great manufacturer. They won the last ever MotoGP race. You know, you got to think of things like that. It's it's crazy to think that they have cut all ties with racing, yet they are so successful in in whatever they choose to to be in. It's uh, interesting that you dropped that. Uh little nugget of information in that uh, <laughs> you're over there. Just having a cup of tea with you, just passing? Just passing, yeah. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> on the way to work. Fair enough. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll find out whether you were just doing that or not. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. And uh, Chris, uh, have you got any uh, questions? Yeah, Rich, I think you might have just slightly brushed over what I was about to ask you next, really. <laughs> obviously, obviously, you know, you've been involved in the roads this year. You know, your main aim, you know, that's, you know, that's really exciting. Uh, yeah, my, you know, my main question really was going to be, are you going to be competing in the British Superbike Championship this year? Um, you know, any sort of plans? Can you shed any light? Um, in all honesty, no. Um, and... It's my choice that I'm not doing it. Um, I have had, I've had many options, you know, and I'm very grateful for the people that have contacted me for full-time rides. However, I'm not where I am in my career at the minute. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not afraid to say I'm tailing off to where I was, even though I still believe I'm competitive. Um, I had a few opportunities to ride in super stock, um, believe it or not, a few opportunities to ride in super bike. This was all for the 2023 season. Um, a few opportunities to, to work for some teams, but, um, I really enjoyed my situation last year. You know, you've seen me, I ride at Emra on a Sunday on the Hawk yeah. bikes. I can go to Darlingmore the following weekend on my own bikes. Um, you know, I did a few British Championship Super Stock, Super Sport. Just picking and choosing those meetings, I really enjoyed it, and I probably rode the best I've ever rode in in a I would say in all my career. And I think it's just because I was in a relaxed state. And results aside, I just wanted to um, enjoy riding the bike. Now, when you compete for a full championship which is what I've done in the past like it's next level you need to be 100% focused for 12 rounds you know for the whole year you have to put everything into place with your training and almost like your private life has to be solely focused on what you are asked to do at the time so i.e. win a Superstock championship or be competitive in a Superbike Championship. And it's not that I don't want to do that. It's just that I've done it for so long. I quite find, I find it more relaxing just to pick and choose what I want to do. So, you know, like I say, I'm very grateful for the people that have offered me these opportunities. Um, Long-winded yes or no answer. I will be at some BSB meetings, just not all of them. Okay. Yeah, because like when I think you were saying, you know, after the terrible accident that you had, you know, at the beginning of last season, um, you know, I think for you to be able to come to an event on your own bike or for another team and be able to get the results and be how you were on the bike just, you know, just says everything. And I think, you know, that must have given you the confidence that you needed to go forward, you know, into what you're going to be doing this year. Um, you know, will we see you maybe in super sport, you know, British super sport on, on, you know, the same bike that you will be on the roads. Um, if, if my team, the Russell racing era had enough budget to, to run a full championship, I would seriously consider being in British super sport for the year. Seriously consider it. However, you know, you've got to think logistically, the team's based in Ireland. So they have to travel across from Ireland to the UK, which is not, cheap at all you know the running cost of a super sport bike to the level that my bike is um is near on super bike money you know as far as engines are concerned um and then you've got tire bills entries fuel bills crash damage you know it's a massive massive expense for in theory what is a one bike or two bikes now with dean run out of a 
seven and a half ton lorry, you know, with a family based people around them. They're not hawk racing, you know, they don't have the infrastructure of hawk racing. Um, and if, if we could draw enough sponsorship in, um, for sure, I would do British Super Sport, but I know it's not going to be possible. So if I can do one or two, you know, if I can do Alton Park, which is the plan, because that's a week before the Northwest, so it's a nice run out on the bike. I hate to miss Brands Act. It's my favourite meeting of the year. It's the best track in the country. You know, we go there twice. In fact, we go to Alton twice and we go to Brands twice. I'd be very happy if the team could get my bike over for those four meetings and that's when you'd see me a British Championship. Um, I can't say it's going to happen. I can't say it's not going to happen, but I fingers crossed it, something will happen. Brilliant. Thanks, Rich. Um, yeah, just sort of agree with what you said earlier on um, in terms of the North West. Um, I'm in agreement with you in terms of I'm a strong believer that it will go ahead. Um, I think myself and I think Many people from the racing family, you know, from Ireland, you know, from everywhere can agree that the mass response that the publicity gave from, you know, financial support to everything, um, it really just shows how strong the road racing community is that everyone from far and wide all over the world is willing to come together to ensure you know, you know, and a heritage, you know, essentially, and, you know, and a series that's been running for so long, you know, can continue. And I do really think that it's so important that we see some road racing in 2023. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. 